This episode of the Smoshcast is brought to you by Sunbasket. You've been with someone with a, for a year, which is a long enough time that if something's not feeling right, maybe first try to do something to see if there's a way to fix the situation. If you are doing anything comedically, there is generally a risk involved in it that somebody somewhere might be offended by something. Finding a good job is is based on luck and timing. There's no guarantee that you're gonna jump out of college and find your dream job instantly. I've been watching Game Grumps again lately. Apparently on YouTube, like they're sort of pushing videos down that specifically say like quarantine and COVID-19. So they're referring to it as the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, then I had I had applesauce all up and down my walls. Oh, no. Uh, it's still there. But the bees, the bees. I mean, there, there's more bees than I was expecting. No. It's no. really bad. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm glad I had Gilbert Gottfried over. That's true. Because he was like, thanks for having me over, Shane. <laughs> yeah. I like that you and your boys have red, white, and blue hats making it the most American or French hat display I've ever seen. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome to another Smoshcast advice Because thingy. we know you want advice from us. The boys like we. The boys, the bros like we. Bros, bros like, like we. we. There we go. That's right. Bros like yeah. we. I forgot. And Brittany, so bros we, like we. Whoa. She's oh. going to sue the hell out of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we decided to to bring the boys together to answer mm -hmm. questions that only men can answer. I mean, not really, but, you know. No, let's be real. These are questions. <laughs> no, no mere. Never mind. Oh, I'm not going to go. God. <laughs> it Ian, is such a minefield. Ian, Ian, what did you eat for breakfast today? Yeah, you're in a, you're in a mood, but. <laughs> Just Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> God. All right, we can't use any of this. No, <laughs> no, we no we're starting now, and now is start. the start of the podcast. Right. Okay. And Ian didn't say anything offensive again. Hello, cool cats and kittens. Hello. Um, so let's just kick it off, y'all. Yeah. yeah. So what? Here's what we're doing today, right? We're yeah. So we asked hats. you guys for for advice for bros like we. Mm -hmm. And um, and we're just gonna jump right into it. You got it, yeah. Philly D. Jump right in. Just jump right in. And let's just jump right into it. But before I get started today, I want to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. <laughs> it's the only video game where you can pull six to eight heroes a day. Some of them epic rarity, and then blah blah blah. Appreciate <laughs> you bringing us. First news today comes to us from. <laughs> Georgia, where a thousand people exploded. No. <laughs> did did he also do a raid Shadow Legends? Everybody has. We haven't. Well, the well here we're wait no because we're advertising a different mobile game right now, mm -hmm. a better game, better one, better, a better, one. a much better game. Yeah, so get raid. <laughs> no, <laughs> raid Shadow Legends. If you feel like advertising us, uh, I rescind my my get. Statement. Uh, can't use that. All right. I actually played so, that game for a minute. It was fun. Don't say that until we get paid, though. That's right. <laughs> no, now they owe me money. That's fun. that's why. Oh, is that how it works? That how sponsorship yeah. works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like when influencers like do like a sponsored content thing, but they didn't get paid for it. There's definitely influencers that make sponsored content that they didn't get paid for. Like they're like, oh my gosh, using my new hashtag uh, L'Oreal hashtag cream. You think like the, they got they got sent it for free, so they're doing it just out of kindness. maybe not even that. Like, not they're always just trying to look like they're, they're just trying. Like oh, they're trying to make it look like they're trying to look like they're success. Like they're a successful influencer that gets. Paid well, I don't know if do it's branding. necessarily it's like a flex. just about that. I, I think yeah. it's also about like making the brand aware of you. Like if you're getting yeah. traction on a post and you're like, "Hey, I love this L'Oreal shampoo," and then they see yeah. that they're like, "Hey, how would you like to do this thing properly?" Like I've had friends do stuff like that. But what's the but that that reasoning seems kind of silly because it's like, why would somebody pay you to do something if you're already doing it for free? So you get on their radar. Like, 
it's the same kind of deal where like, well, I don't know, like if they don't know you exist, then you're not, they're not just going to hit you up one day. And it's also insane for you to have like no content that's relatable to that specific brand and then go to that brand and be like, Hey, L'Oreal shampoo, can I have a bunch of money to post on you? And they'll just be like, no, we're not advertising right now. Who are you? Like, I don't know. I think yeah. if you cozy up to a brand, it's possible. It's not something I generally would do, but I'm, I just, I don't think it's necessarily flex. I've been trying to do that for a while. Dole won't, Give me a brand yeah. new deal. I know. And even I though it's well, Monday. so many goddamn gotta, bananas and they still don't. You gotta go after a Chiquita banana. Mm. They're, they're, the, they're the ones that understand the mm. internet, man. Mm. You can't go after Dole. You have to go after the other banana monopoly. Are God. you trying to get a Michelin sponsorship? For those yeah. of you at home listening, Ian has a Michelin cap uh, and did uh, not get paid to wear it. I'm just trying. This is a bros like we uh, podcast. So I was trying to be as manly as possible. So I wore my <laughs> manliest I'm a manliest hat. So you like, wore a hat with a guy who's made out of sperm to like represent. Oh my Excuse me, he's made out of he's made out of rubber tires. That's basically testosterone. Basically, no, uh, no. The Michelin Man is uh, actually a ghost. I always thought the the original Michelin Man is frightening. Yeah, like absolutely frightening. Most old name. mascots are. He has like a really a really silly French name. Michelin man name. I just have to know. Michelin Marquis. It's, like, it's like Bim Bim. No, <laughs> Bibindum. His name is Bim Bim Bibindum. Bibindum. Huh. And there's this old poster of him, and he's like eating like nuts and bolts. I mean, that, that so makes he's sense. like a monster. He's like a monster that raids your tool shed, and in the middle of the night, you hear some rustling around, and he just turns around like. <laughs> Like that's the that's bolts. just the Iron Giant. Yeah, be yeah, good. He's, he's got he's sitting at a dinner table. He has a cigar in one hand. What? And he has like a martini glass with like a horseshoe. That's and awesome. Like, the nineties were a different time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the eighteen nineties. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Let's give some uh, advice. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Our first question asks. What does the Michelin man look like in his worst form? <laughs> God Thank you. damn it. <laughs> Peter from Arkansas. <laughs> uh, All the questions okay. are about the Michelin man. Yeah, I was wondering, um, if is he like poppable or like is is there just like bone underneath all those tires? <laughs> it's he, all just bone. Is it like hey sinew guys, and Hey guys, big fan of the uh, big fan of the cast. Yeah, I've been so I've been seeing my ex for a while. Uh, you know, I've been having trouble with her. And uh, what's the Michelin Man's deal? <laughs> yeah, is he mostly made up of intestine like a koala? Yes, yes. that was or that was tadpole. the creepiest. That was the creepiest fact that we that we learned yeah. in Australia. That they're like, oh yeah, you think that koalas are like fat because they look they look kind of fat, like they got a lot of fat on them, but they actually have very little body fat on them. It's mostly uh, their digestive system. Yeah. They don't even have a like, brain. Gross. It's just more intestines. It's in just another yeah. stumble, yeah. thick skull. Yeah, Skull is 98% bone, but the bone is 48% tummy, <laughs> tummy meat. <laughs> so, whoo, Australia be so crazy. So the first question yes. uh, comes from Llama Queen. Yes, uh, hi Llama Queen. They asked, for a school project, I'm doing a funny video about the COVID situation. How can I be funny without risking to offend people? Mm. Um, you are risking to offend people by doing a sketch on it. I mean, you're, you're risking it. I'm not saying you're going to offend anyone. Mm. You're risking it because you are making a joke. You're making a sketch around a very tough thing going on. Mm -hmm. So it's inevitable that someone might be offended. I, would I think, say. yeah. I think with any situation like this, what you want to do is is avoid making the joke about victims. You want to you want to appeal to to everyone's experience That's during the point. COVID situation. So, making a joke about how we all have to quarantine is is a good route mm -hmm. to go down. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make a joke about somebody that's sick. Yeah, like because that's. That's maybe well, that's, not cool. yeah, punching <laughs> yeah. down. And that's also, yeah. yeah. That's a that's a good point for anything. If you are doing anything comedically, there is generally a risk involved in it that somebody somewhere might be offended by something. So what you 
need to do for yourself is to come at it from the most understanding and polite way possible. Um, like they said, don't punch down at the victims, make fun of the situation. Like, look at, we just did a few sketches about quarantine, but I don't think we had a single sick person in any of the sketches. It's not about no. that. It's about the shared experience. And if, you know, in your, in your best efforts, somebody still gets upset, you know, that's, that's a tricky situation. You'll have to deal with it then. But if you're doing the best you can beforehand to be understanding and kind, that should be okay. I think what Ian said is, you know, with our sketches and everything, it's COVID adjacent. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, we're, t- we're making fun of things that are a result of the situation. We're not making fun of the situation. Right. Like, and make it about yourself. Like, make a, make a sketch about your experience quarantining and something mm-hmm. dumb there. You know, like, if you make a sketch about running out of toilet paper yeah. and what you're doing to replace toilet paper, that's that has to do with the, yeah. you know, uh, situation that is a result of what's going on this year. It's not making fun of the thing itself. I, mm-hmm. I think that's the only real route you can go. You can't make a sketch about COVID. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could you could tow the. I mean, I would say you could tow the line if you went like the the sort of like always sunny route, where it's like you're you're making fun of the ignorance of people that mm. are doing the wrong thing. But I, I think because it's, it's for so, school, you yeah. got to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, right. Yeah, but and, I think I think it's yeah. It's you just just avoid avoid making jokes about about the victims and then yeah. I think you're good. And I think the difficulty there too is like what you're saying Ian is totally a valid point but people don't always pick up that you're making fun of a character like this character is sure, a bad yeah. person. This character is ignorant and that's the joke. But some people will just take that at face value and be like I can't believe you said that and you're like well I'm making fun of the person. They're like no yeah. you wrote the person. And so it's like ah it's a gray area. Uh, people don't pick up on sarcasm. So if you know I've had tweets or whatever where I am making fun of an offensive person and people just do not pick up on that. Yeah. So they think that I am making an offensive joke when I'm making fun of someone who's offensive. Right. It's kind of like if you did a Ben Shapiro impression and people didn't know who Ben Shapiro was, they'd be going, yeah. why are you saying that awful stuff? It's like, no, I'm making fun of someone yeah. Yeah. who yeah. says awful stuff. Well, that's it's, the whole thing. That's the whole thing with Always Sunny. Like there's a lot of people that watch that show for the wrong reasons. It's, it's the same thing like people that idolize Rick mm-hmm. from Rick and Morty. Right. It's like, no. He's a bad person. Yeah. Like yeah. that's, that's to, yeah. the point. It's pointing out the ignorance of, you know, exactly. a bad person. Exactly. And not everyone, not everyone gets that. Right? Yeah. And, and you just got to kind of, I don't know, like hope that people do if sure. they want to go down that route. But good luck. Not, long, a, queen. not everyone's, not everyone's that big brain. Uh, so next one, this is a curly whirly. Nice name. Uh, they said, I'm about to graduate with my master's in one of the worst job economies in history. I'm defeated that after all this work, I have to go move back in with my dad. I'm not sure when people will be hiring again. Any advice on how to stay positive or find a job? I've got a thought on this one. It, you were in a very unique situation right now where pretty much the whole world is in the same, at least grand scheme of things, boat. So you know, obviously it'd be one thing where if everybody's getting a job left and right, and now you have to move back in with your parents, it would be very disheartening. I understand that even then it would be fine, but it would be disheartening. But right now it's not like everybody has a leg up on you. Everybody else is getting hired right now too. Anybody who's in your boat, who you will be competing against to find a job in a normal situation, you're going to be competing against them in maybe a couple months when this dies down. They didn't, they didn't beat you. You're not the only one stuck, you know? I think that's a good point. You're not, yeah, not knowing that you're not alone is, is -hmm. a good one. Um, I think also a big one is, you know, a lot of us, especially if you were going to college and and everything, Mm -hmm. you've put your worth on finding a job, but a job is, and I know this is, I know it's impossible to not be stressed and not feel down when you're, when you don't have a job and Mm -hmm. you're probably in debt from your degrees, but that isn't your whole worth. And there Mm -hmm. is more to life than that. And, I think the way you get through this phase, because if you keep trying, you keep putting yourself out there, you keep submitting for jobs, you keep searching for jobs, it may take time. Like it mm-hmm. may take, it may take years. And like you just have to like be patient with that and find worth in other things and and know that just because you're not super successful right now doesn't mean you won't be eventually and doesn't exactly. mean life is hopeless. Right. You know? So also f- like finding a good job is so much of that is 
is based on luck and timing. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to, there's no guarantee that you're going to jump out of college and find your dream job instantly. Mm -hmm. Like I think about that sometimes too with, with Smosh, with some of like the really great people that we have working with us. I'm like, they just happen to be Mm -hmm. on the market for a job when we were looking for somebody to fill that position. Like, Mm -hmm. How rare is that, that yeah. you're, that the perfect person is going to be looking for the job at the exact moment that you need to fill that position? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think it sucks to have to move back in with your parents, but also it's it's a fortunate position to be able to have that fallback, mm-hmm. to be able to 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 have, you know, a roof over your head for that for the time being. And yeah, it's it's so much about luck and timing. Like it, it might take some time, but I mean, you got a master's. That's that's definitely a leg up on other people. I don't know what the I don't know what the degree is. I know I know it can sometimes make it tougher because jobs don't want to hire someone with a master's and have to pay them more as opposed to hiring multiple people with less and pay them less. But mm-hmm. I would also say don't be afraid. You probably, as someone with a master's, you probably have a very you have a vision of what you want, where you want to work, and what you want to do. Especially in this time, keep your horizons open and other jobs that you may not have never thought that you'd want to do or see yourself in might come about and you might find yourself in a career a few years down the line where you're like i never would have thought i'd be working in this totally but you could be that happens all the time people have masters in one type of major but they end up working in a complete there was a twitter thread recently where it was like what's your degree and what you what do you work in and people Mm -hmm. had so many where they were in a completely different someone was like i have a degree in biochemistry and i'm a comic book writer or something like that's that. That's insane. Like, just stuff so, yeah, like that I mean, happens. And- flipping Ashton Kutcher was like molecular biology or something like mm-hmm. that, and then was like, "I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be an underwear model." And then yeah, that's where his stuff. But he was off. also hot, so, so. <laughs> yeah. So all you have to do is be born so just be hot, just, just be like born, Ashton, yeah. just so hot, and then you're. Fine. That's really the key to life. Just, just but I just think look hot. Born I think hot. that's the. I think there is yeah. something to like really keeping your mind open and yeah. like just patience, man. Like. It, 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 Damien's right. It's brutal for everyone. Yeah. And it, you know. But Shane made a great point. Like between working on So Random and then starting on Smosh, I had so many different jobs. And every single one of them, I was like, oh, I can actually see how I can move forward in this and be happy. Like, and they all just sort of led me to where I am today. Not directly, mm-hmm. certainly not a direct path. Working uh, customer service uh, and then spending time with my buddies later in online gaming, built that relationship. And then one of those buddies got me that leather crafting job and I learned how to do that. And then the person that hired me for the leather crafting job got me into working sound for 3D cameras. And then when that happened, I was more like available to do like a, vo- a VR uh, voice acting based job because they knew I was doing that. Like, And then, you know, I'm back here because of stuff I, you know, connections I made from So Random Days. So like, like, it's all a path, but it's certainly not a straight line. And I think that'll take pressure off you because even if you're just moving slightly to the left and up a little bit, you've still got some forward movement and then eventually you'll get to where you want. And it's also okay if you put in a bunch of effort into something and it ends up not going anywhere. The that's point true. is to just be putting in effort because that's fulfilling for yourself. Mm-hmm. It's tough and it's okay to acknowledge that it's brutal and it's, mm-hmm. it is tough to be motivated. You're not going to be motivated every day, mm-hmm. but you just keep going, okay. I'm going to keep working towards a goal, but I'm going to put in my effort everywhere. And if opportunities arise, I'm going to put in as much effort as I can into those and just keep going. Y'all, grocery stores are crazy right now, and I'm doing whatever I can to avoid going to them. And that's where a service like Sunbasket comes in handy because they send the food to you and then you make it. Sunbasket delivers healthy, delicious meals straight to your door. Sunbasket has delicious recipes for all kinds of dietary preferences, including paleo, gluten-free, Mediterranean, vegetarian, and more. Each week, Sunbasket offers a wide range of recipes to choose from, so you could try mouthwatering dishes dishes such as hoisin steak strip lettuce cups with pickled daikon and carrots, roasted salmon with miso glazed eggplant, black bean tostadas diablo with cabbage slaw and guacamole. And right now, Sunbasket is offering $35 off your order when you go right now to sunbasket.com slash smosh and enter promo code smosh at checkout. That's sunbasket.com slash smosh and enter promo code smosh at checkout for $35 off your order. Sunbasket.com slash smosh and enter promo code smosh all right uh let's move on to this next one uh this one comes from hoo hoo beanie 
Ooh, nice. beanie. Uh, which you can get at Smosh.store. Nice. <laughs> this person asks, how do you create a workspace at home that you feel comfortable working in? I find myself getting distracted too often by the smallest things. And because of that, I find it hard to focus. I've got a thought on this, if that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, as an introverted person. That's why we brought you on this podcast. Oh, thank you so much. As an introverted person that used to work from home uh, while I was doing customer service, um, and so I'm pretty used to that, um, you have to have designated spaces for different things, even if it's not a different room. Like I spend most of my time in this small room, but if I'm working, even if I have a laptop and I'm able to be mobile, I never do it on my bed. Not once, because if I'm on my bed, that's when I can see my TV, all my video game controllers are there. That's when I start to get distracted. That's when I relax. That's when I pick up the phone and look at it. If I am at my desk, I am either doing work for Smosh and writing or Twitch streaming or whatever, or voice acting, but it's, this is work. I can't relax here anymore. Maybe when quarantine is over, but I cannot relax at my desk. Um, that's what's been helping me a lot. I mean, cause, cause when you're working at home, you never feel like you're on the clock or off the clock. So mm-hmm set times in the day that Mm -hmm. you're not working and times of the day that you are working. Mm -hmm. And I think also when it, when you're finding it hard to be motivated to work, try doing the hardest tasks at the beginning of the day, Mm -hmm. get that stuff done first. And then it's less daunting to get something done. Cause like we've, we've, uh, we've had shoots where, I just find it so like now that we're shooting at home, I find it so hard to 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 shoot sometimes because mm-hmm. I, the the task just seems so daunting. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have so many scenes to shoot and like costume mm-hmm. changes and angles and like all this stuff and and I find it hard to just to just put that foot forward to get started. Yeah, it's a lot easier to motivate yourself later on in the day if it's an easier thing to do. I'd agree with that. Definitely. I also, um, I think breaking things up and looking at it task by task, like as as much as you can put it into pieces as opposed to looking at, oh, I've got to do all of this today. I've got to do it. Like for us, it's like, oh, I got to do a whole shoot today going, no, I'll do this scene. I got this scene. I'll split that. That scene is consists of these two different shots. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm breaking it up into piece by piece. So I know like I'm just focused on that. I'm focused on something that is very doable in that moment. Mm -hmm. As opposed to shoot this whole sketch, that seems impossible. And then also there's, I know there's a lot of apps and stuff on the phone that like, it'll be like a timer. And while that timer's up, if you go out of the app, it, it like stops or whatever. So it's kind of like a commitment thing of like, Hey, this forces you to essentially be off your phone for Mm -hmm. however much time you set on it and stuff like that can be really good because the phone is the easiest thing to distract you. Totally. So if you, if you eliminate that, and you see that timer, you know, like, okay, in that space, I, I, I just got to work. I'll work in that time limit. Once that's up, I'll give myself a 15 minute break. I think that's a big one, Shane, because I think at least for myself, I have a really hard time relaxing because of the stuff that you said, Ian, where it's like, I, you know, there's no on the clock or off the clock. I'll still be waiting around at 8 PM when I should be relaxing, thinking like, oh, is there something else I can do? And I think it's because I haven't fully designated the time for work or for play Um, because you get on your phone because you're like, oh, there's no way, you know, I'm going to be relaxing right now. I just have to have one more minute with my phone. Take 15 minutes of work and then you've earned yourself 15 minutes of phone time. And when you actually schedule in the fun stuff, too, that is as important as the work, you don't ignore either. You don't blur the lines. You can have it be their own things that you have to do. You have to relax for 15. Yeah. And be, be present with your work, like put your, put all of yourself, the more you put yourself into that work, Mm -hmm. the more relaxed you're going to feel later. It's kind of like when, if you work out, working out harder just lets you relax more once you're done and you feel better because you feel you really gave it your all and you got it all done. This uh, question also comes from Hoo Hoo Beanie. Oh. which you could still get at Smosh.store. It's a friendship-related question. They said, during this quarantine, I found myself distancing myself from my friends because I don't like texting. Any tips on how to avoid becoming a hermit? This is an example of like, you just sort of got to do it. Like maybe you can invite your friends to a Zoom call if that's easier than texting. But like, I get not wanting to rely on text, but right now the circumstances of the world are pretty different. So like, it's either, do you want to stay in contact with your friends or do you want to not text? It's kind of the, yeah. I mean like two. just find a different way of, of staying in contact with them other than texting. Cause texting is, is like, we all just became so used to that being the main form mm-hmm. of communication because it's quote unquote easy. 
But holy shit, it's so much easier to have a conversation over the phone or yeah. over FaceTime. It's so much easier. And you can focus on the person. You can actually have a real conversation rather than send one thing and then answer back 30 minutes later. Mm-hmm. You can't have like a real conversation with a group of people over text. Like it's just yeah. a pain in the ass. And you lose, yeah. you lose nuance in text too. You read it totally. and you're like, how could they be so mean about that? And they're like, no, I was being sarcastic, you know? It's yeah, tough, for yeah. sure. But so I don't think there's I think, anything necessarily. I, I think you can do both. I think, but I think it's a matter of very similar to our previous question. It's a matter of just like setting up, like knowing every day that you're going to reach out to someone mm-hmm. like just, and, and maybe it is texting. It, that's something but to just make sure you're always, and I think that's good even outside of quarantine, because I think it's very easy to lose track of some people, you know, like I mm-hmm. think just to always be like, oh, okay, I'm going to reach out to this person. I'm going to say that I'm, even if I'm just saying I'm thinking about them. Let's jump into some quarantine related questions. Oh, fun. Uh, this one. Have you guys, my- sorry, random thing. I've been watching Game Grumps again lately because I've had so much more time. The funniest thing is apparently on YouTube, like they're sort of pushing videos down that specifically say like quarantine and COVID-19 like it's sort of a listened thing like like any cursing would be so they're referring to it as the Backstreet Boys reunion tour <laughs> <laughs> so they keep saying like they're like yeah I didn't want to go to the beach because people could be giving away tickets to the tour and you didn't even <laughs> so try to funny. go but all of a sudden you're there <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> Isn't god that that's great? funny sorry I so I, I love that love with our own I don't know if the algorithm picks up people mentioning COVID and all I know is they they were just great, calling it I, that but I, I understand the paranoia videos. around it and why for sure, they do that for sure god Absolutely. that's so funny though sorry I just god, had that's, to share that's genius no that's I love genius. that uh, I love them got, gotta love the game rooms gotta Aaron love them. and Danny they're my Good favorites boys. oh Good and boys. actually that leads into uh this this question uh right uh, actually. they said how to wait does it yeah for me this comes from accordingly 69 yeah. <laughs> nice uh yeah dude they said how to maintain your sanity while living alone, please and thank you. So the reason that I've I've answered first for all these questions, oh. so I'm sorry. But the reason that bleeds into um, what I was talking about with the game grumps was when I lived alone, I was like I lived alone from ages like 20 to 22, 23. Um, I had my own little bachelor pad in mid city LA and back when property values were so much lower and I could actually have a one bedroom for way less than it should have been a uh, very lucky good position but i would go days without talking to people because i would just be in my place playing video games like i don't need to go to the store i don't need to do anything but what really helped me was having a routine and at that time that was when the game grumps first started and they uploaded twice a day once at 10 a.m once at 2 p.m and those were very specifically the times I looked forward to most in the day. So it'd be like, oh, I have to get my work done. So I have to, you know, so I can be ready for the video upload. Um, Obviously, that's not going to be the case for everybody. But having a routine is incredibly important uh, and making yourself stick to it. You are the only one who is responsible for yourself when living alone. So have some discipline. Uh, let yourself be like, no, I can't have sweets before this hour of the day. No, I can't watch TV until work gets done. Like you have to have a second mind sort of overcoming all sort of uh, distractions that you have in front of you. And it helps to write that down in a routine. Word vomit. There we go. I think that's good. I think I, I think I relate to that in a lot of ways. There's silver linings you know, to living alone, which is mm-hmm. one is that like you're in full control of like your living space and like, yeah, your day. So it is easier in some ways to be productive. I think it's, I think living alone has helped me a lot with, with fitness. Like I know everything is ready at home. I Mm -hmm. I got everything set up, whatever, go to the gym, but even living alone now, like I'm like, I can work out in the middle of my living space at any time. I'm not disrupting anybody else's time. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, for me, it's before all of this, like I would go hang out with people. I would go to work. You know, living alone when I didn't have a job was really tough for me, Mm -hmm. I will say, because I had so much time by myself and being able to when I'm going to an office and I'm working all day and I'm around people all day, it's very nice to come back to my own space. I love that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And same if I go to out to a party or a bar and I'm hanging out with people, it's nice to come back to my own space at the end of the night and then wake up and just it just be me. And I'm like, just worried about myself. But I think also like one of the previous questions, you got to also make sure you're reaching out to people all the time you got to be active about your so like make it a routine of like okay i'm gonna hit people up every day call them text them whatever Mm -hmm. just just to keep that going as as good as you think you might be dealing with 
living alone right now, like try to be aware of like when you're struggling during mm-hmm. this and reach out to a friend. Yeah. Makes and I think sense. that's I think that's probably the most important thing. Cause Definitely. like for me, for me, like I always I always like compartmentalize things and like just kind of like, nah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I can deal with it. But mm-hmm. it definitely does help like talking with friends, especially Absolutely. through this kind of stuff. This might be too deep. Um, so maybe ignore it. But you know, you're saying it's good to talk through things like that. As a friend of yours, sometimes I feel like there are walls up, like when I want to talk about something more serious or check in that you're okay, like you said, you're good at sort of fronting, like, no, nah, it's fine. Hey, it's how it goes. So as a friend, how would you, is it just a timing thing for you where like sometimes you're ready to talk and sometimes you won't? Do you care if I like push a little bit? Cause there have been things recently where I wanted to like check up on you, but I got sort of like a, like, ah, I'm chill, man. So I don't know. Yeah. Do you, is it, is it on me as your friend to like, go further or do I wait for you to reach out or if this is too deep, ignore it. But no, I mean like I, I, I also don't think that I'm the best at like recognizing, Mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, I need like help or not, not, not so much like help, but just like, I'm, I'm very much like I, maybe it's like, I don't want to burden people or, Mm. or I just don't want to be bothered to, to like, talk about it i'm I'm not i'm not completely certain but i do but i do think it's like it's definitely good to to talk to people it's it's good to just even if it's not about like anything in particular just just being able to Mm -hmm. to unload whatever's going on in your brain is a is a healthy thing sure Um, okay typically dealing with with anything uh in particular that's that's uh you know that I see as a as a problem. So let's see. Let's move on to the next one. Uh De Bull 1014. Uh, and this is actually a question, Shane, you were sort of touching on already. Uh, what's a good at home workout routine for someone without a lot of weights? Oh mm-hmm. sh- do it, son. I've been getting a lot of messages uh from people asking me my workout routine during all this. I do have a couple pairs of dumbbells, so mm-hmm. that is obviously if you don't have them that that makes things a little more difficult. Um honestly, like I I for one, I mean if if there is a park or somewhere where you can jog a, a safe distance from everyone, that's great. I mean jogging is is just so healthy for you. If you don't have that, if you have a jump rope, that's awesome too. For me, I mean, honestly, I've been doing a lot of uh, body weight exercises. I do just a ton of push-ups. I mean, on mm-hmm. on those days, I have a pull-up bar. If you don't have that, back exercises are really tough to figure out. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, so with stuff like push-ups, if you're doing push-ups and bicycles and 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 sit-ups, um, and then you're doing stuff like squats, jump squats are amazing. You just literally jumping up in the air as much times as a row lunge switchbacks where you kind of have your, le- you're like down in a lunge type of situation and you just switch your legs back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, and just, you know, Google, like look up like great body weight exercises for every muscle group. And there's tons. So body weight exercises would be the term is that. I, I, me I, I hearing just, that makes me go like, oh, holy crap. Yeah, that's what I would Google. Yeah, because you're just Got using it. your body weight. You don't have cool. anything else. Uh, stuff like yoga is even great. I mean, there is so much stuff you can do. And and yes, you're, you're not able to gain a lot of mass of like lifting heavy weight. Mm-hmm. But you do a bunch of reps. I mean, you work out hard, push yourself for an hour. A lot of those like, you know, um, high interval training classes that people pay a lot of money to go to, a lot of them don't incorporate that many weights. Like it's just mm. body weight exercise. Is it called calisthenics? Calisthenics? Calisthenics or thing. Might, Isn't that be. body weight? Is that body weight? Exercise? I don't, I, I don't, don't actually know. know, but I know it can be referred to as body weight exercises and there's a ton. And I mean, if you Google it, there's, I'm sure now, especially there's tons of YouTube fitness channels mm-hmm. that are like making yep. full routines. I know even Chris Hemsworth had like a thing that he was doing. There's tons of stuff you can do. And all you need is literally like a six, foot square space just wear some gym shorts and stuff and and you can you can do everything you need i mean really and and that goes beyond this like if you're able to commit to that and you do that at least every other day Mm -hmm. you'll be in great shape eventually i mean that uh, the consistency is more important than the actual routine i believe Yep. yep i believe if you do something every if you jog a mile a day every day for months 
that's going to be better than doing the craziest workout yeah a couple days 100 percent. i mean that's just how it goes because a lot of those people that that do do the crazy workout do do they end up uh, either injuring themselves yeah. or they just they're just like oh well I did that crazy workout so I don't need to work out for yeah. for three or four days and also that's me sometimes yeah. like <laughs> I'm definitely guilty of that mm-hmm. uh, I, think and I think this 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 uh, this offers a great opportunity to like be like okay over the course of the next month while I'm still in quarantine I'm gonna work on seeing how many push-ups I can get myself up to doing by the mm-hmm. end of it and so every mm-hmm. day I'm gonna try to do a little bit more. Give yourself a rest day every now and then, but but keep trying to up that number. Stuff like that's yep. great. Yeah. How many push-ups are you up to, bro? Hundreds. Five thousand. Five thousand. I haven't officially tried to see how many I can do in a row. Um because I'll do, do it. like I'll do like twenty-five and I'll take a break. I'll do like some tricep stuff, then I'll go back, do twenty-five. I took I took push-ups for granted in a way because when I was in karate as a kid, they would have you do all these like stretches and exercises before you started. And so it would be like, you know, you got to do this routine of stretching. And at the end, I'm going to need uh, 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 squats, like all that stuff. And then we can get started. So it was all like a race with how quick you could get done, like with your other classmates. So back when I was like a spry youngster with a very fit body and like didn't have to deal with you know, just being a tired adult. Um, We did like 50 to 60 push-ups, like Mm -hmm. with good form within like a minute or two. And it like, it was nothing. And then I stopped doing that. Now going back as an adult trying to do push-ups, I'm like, whoo, that 20 was sure a lot. Also your body weight is so much more. (laughs) I know, but I'm just saying I had a skewed view where I was like, oh, I could probably do like 60 right now. And it's like, no, no, you can't. I I think I was, I think I was like 13 and I did a hundred in a row. But that's because wow. I weighed nothing. Yeah, right. I could never. I don't think it's possible for me to do a hundred in a row now because Too I powerful. weigh. I have seventy pounds on when I was thirteen. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm lifting more weight. Yeah. Sure, mm-hmm. that's so. fair. What I've been doing to do that is, uh, I'll step outside on my balcony and just like sigh a few times, and then I'll go back inside. That's good. That's a good that's one. Good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, breath, breath work. I eat Oreos with a lot of passion. Mm. Okay, sorry, random thing. I am not a sweets guy, but last night I was like, I gotta have something. So I postmated some ice cream from Salt and Straw. I got bone marrow and smoked cherry flavored ice cream. Whoa! Astounding. Yeah, Salt and Straw, salt and straw does not. F- They're not messing about. They They're not messing weird. about, son. They get weird. So good I, I, can't, I can't. I can't with the weird ones. I love salt and straw, but I. I still even at salt and straw, I get chocolate or vanilla, or like coffee flavor if I'm feeling crazy. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered some from Jenny's, and I got like a, I got like a brown sugar and like almond, <laughs> like toffee. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it was so. <laughs> Flipping Stretching. good. Uh, yeah. We're working our way down these questions. There's no way we'll get to the whole bottom section. There's one in that bottom section that you know I want to talk about from, okay. the, from the Instagram questions. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. You know there's you, you know which one it is. Just jump to it. Just do it. You you know which one No, it is. I don't. It's the third just call one. it out. Just, the, just read it. It's the third one. This is your rodeo. Really? But this is such a dumb question. Like, all right. We all know the answer to this one. Uh-huh. Helena Elena dot XO asked, uh-huh. should toilet paper roll over or under? And obviously it's over. Over. You yes. have to be a stupid idiot. To I got to be honest. I got to be honest here, man, because I've been thinking about this. Shut up. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it Shut. going under. I don't think there's anything Shut wrong with it. Up. I, I am mad at you now. I am. Shane. I am. Look, I am the only person I think in the world that is completely neutral on this. But I'm passionate. Pick a side. There's a I'm war going on. No, I'm passionately neutral. I think both sides work just fine. I think the benefit Don't of the go under. Switzerland the on benefit this. of the under is that there's you're less likely to accidentally roll out too much. I've never done that though. I as an adult, how you know you're tearing off three pieces, three little squares at a time or whatever. How do you go uh, and then accidentally unroll the whole thing? You don't yank it, you tear it to the right or left like an adult. It's, that, it's not that much more inconvenient for it to be on the backside. It is. Untrue. It's the difference between going boop or... No. Yeah. You're, idiot. Not, you're not a f***ing cat. 
Thank you. I am not one of them. And that's why I don't need to do it under because it's dumb. Actually, yeah. If you have a cat, maybe going under would be would be better. Oh, I've I brought Ian to my side. We'll fight you both and win. Oh, that's actually I mean, a great point. Having it under would make it less likely for a cat to roll it all my out. My cat because doesn't it, roll it out. Your yeah, cat never, doesn't. I've never had a cat do it. I'm just saying like but if it's a cat possible. decides to do it, maybe under Train your cat's be better. Possible. I, Holy I flat crap. Out do not I never, I never thought I, I'd be an under boy. If I put I mean, on I'm, my toilet paper and I realize, yeah. oh, I put it under, I'm not changing it. I don't care. Mm. That's that's where I stand. It Wherever what? it's at, it does not bother me. What bothers me more than the over the under is when toilet paper, when the when the holder is like in a very odd place, when it's like way behind, like it's it's next, mm-hmm. it's parallel to the tank that's as weird. opposed to being next to the seat. Yeah, so when people have those the, way back the toilet paper holders that aren't actually attached to the wall, they're like on a long ass like stand. Yeah, but then it's like in like, a weird what? place. Like it's, yeah. it can't be too yeah. far. It's got to be right yeah. next to yep. your right or left hand. Like it's got to be literally your arm is still bent and yes. you're able to just grab it. That I've is, thrown out a shoulder me. before trying to wipe my ass with things like that. Yeah, it's tough um, work, man. It's hard work, man. Got a big ass. Also, just want to say <laughs> real quick, um, the patent for toilet paper, if you look it up, it is over. Well, oh. yeah. Oh, oh. So you're saying we should do things like we did in the 1800s? No. Yes, exactly. Because we get better at stuff. We don't need no like <laughs> life hacker. Like, actually, if you take your toilet paper and pull it through a tissue box, it works. Blah 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 blah. blah. It's like forget that. Nobody ever actually uses the life hacks that we tell them about, Shane. So why don't okay. we just do things for real? <laughs> all right. So we all agree. We all agree. Over, 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 unless you have a crazy cat that doesn't likes matter. a roll of toilet matter. paper. Yeah, all right, we so let me matter. let me just jump, let me jump to a uh, dating question. Oh, um, oh, over or under? Local lesb uh, asked. Uh, that's their name. I d- didn't. That's just what their name is. Uh, they said tips on finding a partner. I've been really lonely during quarantine, and I'd love to at least start talking to someone to not feel as lonely when when you're talking about finding a partner nothing's worse than desperation so if you're i'm just saying like like if you're saying like gosh i'm really lonely i really want to find someone to talk to because i'm just so lonely that's not a good angle to come after i mean i don't think that's their opening line but no but it's the intention hi hi please oh fuck i'm so lonely because i can i I think they just mean in general like they want to be dating they just want to like, but I don't know. I have a problem with that. I, I've always had an issue with the idea because I used to be that way of of needing of your happiness being reliant on you being in a relationship, I think is the most unhealthy thing. And I know mm-hmm. that's I know that's also making an extreme out of what the I know the person asking probably means it's in a much lighter sense of just like, oh, I'd like to be dating. How do I date it during this time? Mm-hmm. But also you're if, if you are lonely because you're not in a relationship that's a problem like you you don't have to be lonely because you're mm-hmm. not in a relationship but dating apps and stuff i mean, I mean people are figuring it out like mm-hmm. but obviously yeah you're not gonna be able to like fully date someone right now like that's just like not in person yeah i started doing like video dates How's and, it going? but it's like if i'm not vibing with the person i'm not gonna just because i'm lonely i'm not gonna like go back and talk to them you just like close the laptop like no heads up it's like i'm done yeah. bye no <laughs> But it is it is a little awkward. Like I went on one, and I had my doubts by the pictures they were using, and my doubts were confirmed when when they showed up on video because they were very strategically positioned. Let me just say that it's all right. Look, it's just just represent yourself truthfully in in the apps. Like it's, I'm not saying I'm not saying like they were. When you look different from your photos on mm-hmm. the dating apps, that's not right. That's <laughs> you not look okay. Into the FaceTime, and it's just this. Yeah, <laughs> but he's not yeah. FaceTiming a Midwestern father. <laughs> it's just I mean, it's, a, it's a it's it's the same. It's oh, the same for the audio people. I Shane put his phone directly like below his chest, so looking I look like at the titan. under chin. Yeah, yeah, like a titan. It's I mean, it's the same thing if you're meeting somebody in person for like a first date. I've heard I've heard horror stories of of people meeting someone and they're complete like so one person. I always that I feel talk so to, bad about that though. Like that's I, I, like it must be so tough to to be so uncomfortable with your looks that you 
feel you have to completely lie about. I mean, it's essentially, I mean, you're talking about one step away from catfishing where people who do literally Photoshop their pictures. Mm -hmm. So they just essentially are a different person in their yeah. photos as opposed to, but I feel so bad for them. I feel like that's gotta be so tough. Yeah. Or yeah. somebody like myself who's in my thirties, there's people that are using photos of themselves from like oh. six or seven years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're like, ah, okay. I mean, interesting choice. I, and I look yeah. when I was on dating apps, I had the option of like using photos that made me look like I was taller or like, you know, what, whatever. And I was always against sex. I'm like, I would so much rather the swipes that I'm getting. I know that they know what I look like for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and honestly, if it's going to be a problem for that person, like if height, for example, if someone would not have swiped left, swiped left, if they thought, you know, that you weren't a super duper tall person, then it's already not going to work out with that person. Yeah. So why lie about it and get them on a date only for them to be like, well, no, I'm the type of person where height matters so much. There's no way like you're wasting both of your, your time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's brutal. I mean, it's it just is. so brutal. Of I mean, obviously, sucks. like it's yeah, I think my my approach is always just represent myself as truthfully as I can on on mm -hmm. dating apps. But but then I also understand like people have insecurities and that bleeds through on their of course on their, on their profile. Of course. It's of course. just unfortunate because it's like you can't you can't start a relationship off on a lie. Well, it also. Yeah. Like yeah. I can get that because even if they were the even if they were. Even if I found them attractive when I saw them in person, if they looked completely different than the photos, I'd be just weirded out. I'd be like, yeah. wait, yeah. what? What's like going this? on? Yeah. Now I can't trust anything you're going to do. Yeah. Like, so when I went on that video date, vibe was immediately off because I was like, oh, you look completely different. It is. Well, because you do start on a lie and that's the thing. But also you might be attracting the wrong kind of people if you're, you know, um, you know, adjusting your photos at all. Like I'm somebody who, when I was on the dating apps, I would be very intimidated. If all the shots look like model, 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 I'm like, Oh, that's no way. Like I, I, she looks like she'd be mean to me or something like that. Or mm -hmm. like, you know, she looks like she would want to go to the club every night and that's not my thing. And I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even give it a shot. But if that person turned out to be like so introvert, introverted and like look like a normal human being and all that stuff, that's what I would actually be like attracted to. But if they misrepresented themselves as a model or something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, I that you're attracting with the, the uh, wrong type of person. I got that you. with the bio too, because I remember I had mm -hmm. friends trying to like, give me pointers on like, no, the bio needs to be like, this needs, needs to be a little bit more like flirty and, and, and serious or whatever. And I was like, I'm not that yeah. like, yep. cool. Yeah. Like, should I pretend that I'm a different human mm -hmm. until they meet me and realize I'm not that human? Like, yeah. I you can know. finally relax after a year of a relationship and be like, yeah. okay, God, well, this is who I really am. Here you go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what people do and it sucks. Yeah, it's, it's why, crazy. it's why uh, so many relationships are dysfunctional. So uh, this next question comes from Ben Atherton, 03. They the said, Ben Atherton, 03? The Ben Atherton, Z3. Z is Z, Z not, not O. Zero? Yeah, I guess they don't. Zilch, ought. Yeah, ought. Yeah, ought. My bad. Thanks for calling me out. Thanks you for making me look bud. stupid, Damien. Uh, dude, uh, you got yourself for that. No worries. This person said, so I've been with a girl for about a year. Since quarantine started, I've been pretty distant. Because I don't see her, I think I've lost interest. Do I try to wait the quarantine out and see how I feel or break things off now? Oh, man. That's there's a, a lot. There. I feel there's, like there's a lot there. There's so much not information there, I feel <laughs> like. Like, you've been seeing a girl for a year, and now you're actively saying, like, yeah, I've been distant. I've moved away. I don't see her. I don't keep in contact with her too much. So, of course, you don't feel anything because now you're making yourself a stranger to her. One, maybe we should bleep your name in case she also <laughs> smosh. Yeah. But two, like, you've sort of got to check in with where your emotions are at. Do you miss this girl? Do you actually want to communicate with her? You know, you're saying you feel yourself pull away, but even though your feelings are something you can't quite control, your actions definitely are. So if you're, it's not like your body has made you pull away. It's like you are pulling away. You got to ask yourself why you're, why you're doing that. It is an active thing. That being said, it is very tricky to maybe break off with someone. I don't know if you're, 
younger or if you're like, you know, living on your own. But if, if you're this, the only person that this girl would have during quarantine and you're breaking it off, that sucks. Like I acknowledge that. It's crazy times. Like I would normally say like, yeah, it sounds like you've lost interest. Maybe you should break it off. Sounds like you're not interested anymore. But also it's like, this is a crazy time that nobody prepared for. And maybe you just have a lot of stuff on your mind. And because of that, you're not able to focus on somebody that you care about. But you've also like recognized this feeling. So I feel like you're just kind of, I feel like you've kind of recognized that you're not feeling anymore. And you're just delaying the inevitable. I think that's possible. Mm-hmm. I think, but I, but I will say, there's so many ways you could go about giving advice of on course. this. Because I would also say, you've been with someone with a, for a year, which is a long enough time that if something's not feeling right, maybe first try to do something to see if there's a way to fix the situation. Mm-hmm. If you're going, oh, I'm not feeling this because we're not talking much. Well, then maybe try to set up something so you're talking more, like. You know, you uh, you dated this person for a year. There must have also been something there to start with. Mm-hmm. You know, I see a lot of questions where it's like, yeah, I haven't been feeling it lately. Um, should I just end it? And I'm like, well, do you want to see if maybe like, you know, there is an a- there is an aspect of work involved in a relationship that mm-hmm. you put in effort. And if you continue to be in relationships and expect to just keep feeling it, regardless of h- how much effort you're putting into it, then you're going to end up single over and over and over again. Yeah, you, there has to be an element of putting in f- for this other person. Um, That's a good point. I don't know. I, I'd say s- if you if you have done that and you're feeling this way, then yeah, maybe it's time to move on. But give it I a will shot. say not to not to make this person feel bad, but like when you're looking for a partner, especially something a little bit more long term, it's also important to know how you react in a crisis. Right. Yeah. Like cause this is the kind of person where like if you're going to continue being with them, it's been a year, two years, three years, you things are going to come up. The world is going to be crazy again at some point. And if you are the type of person to in a crisis, just completely detach and not need a partner, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just maybe how you're wired. But if that's not what you need or you feel yourself not even gravitating toward this person in a crisis, then maybe it's not a good match. Don't rush into anything, you know, any decisions, but you definitely have to consider where you're at right now and how you've responded already. Yeah. yeah. So probably worth having a conversation with this this uh, significant other yeah, of yours like and that. say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. Maybe this is why I'm feeling it. How are you feeling? How do you feel about me being more distant? Is or do you okay care? You? Do you care? Does it actually yeah. matter to you what they think? Yeah. Or are you asking just to ask? Yeah. That's yeah. another important question. All right, so we're we're coming down to the end. So let's go to the la 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 lightning round. Uh, so so this is uh, these are a bunch of questions that were asked over Instagram. Thank you guys so much for submitting those to, that story. to uh, yeah, the Smosh that. Instagram story. This uh, comes from Kyle Durand. Uh, the question was, "What are some healthy coping mechanisms you guys use?" Journaling. Write down exactly how you feel about stuff. Vent it all out. Exercise and designate specific time to relax. Don't leave it nebulous. Give yourself one hour of relaxation scheduled. I probably don't have one. I compartmentalize. All right, let's go to the next one. (laughs) This one comes from uh, Trix464. They said, favorite part about filming from home? Setting my own schedule, being my own boss. Setting my own schedule and being bottomless all the time. Gross. Not having to drive to work. And just being here and just have, getting a little bit more sleep. No, nope, that's my very awesome. Part. Okay, so now this person, Andy Hayes, asks: When you were kids, what did you want to be when you grow old? And uh, in parentheses, how did dream change? How did dream change? Doctor, then astronaut, then chef, but then I got attention for being in a theater production, and then I was an actor, and now we're here. Um, I didn't have dreams. I okay, no I wanted to be a veterinarian for all of my childhood until I did Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory in uh, fifth grade and was like, oh, I'm actually really good at this. All right. Have I we enjoy, talked I about this? this. What? Uh, Shane, Willy, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory was my first play that got me into acting in third what part, grade. What part did you play? <laughs> Willy Wonka. I played Willy Wonka. Whoa! <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's did we so just find funny. out? A new thing about you guys? What the that's hell? That's so funny. Yo, that's... <laughs> insane i was the only one to audition for the part so yeah well i was the only one who was like asking for it everyone's like i don't care i don't know and i was like can i be willy wonka and they're like yeah well here's some attention he's the one with the name in the title i want to be that one 
Shane. God, I, I, it used to be on video. I used to have the VHS of it. I, I have wish. to have some photos somewhere. Yeah. My mom has to. That'd be funny. That's crazy. Dude. Shane, what the hell? That's I mean, what other plays one. What other plays are you going to do in fifth grade? Well, what are you sorry, talking sorry, about? Guys, There's gotta, a million. Gotta, sorry. Death sorry, of a salesman. I know, we just discovered, I know we just discovered this, but guys, we got to move on. It's lightning round. Okay, sorry. Okay, right. fine. We got to touch on that later. Can't wait for this more interesting question that That's comes. wild. <laughs> Here um, it is. Drew Nichols 13 uh, asked, what are some small pleasures? For example, mine is a mug of hot chocolate. Finding extreme commonality with a friend and discovering new things after years of friendship. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, sitting down and playing a video game while watching TV. Splitting my brain two ways actually occupies all of my thoughts so I don't have to like overthink stuff. So video game and TV at the same time. Uh, two answers. Fresh laundry. Mm. And also when you wake up... Uh, two hours before your alarm goes off. So you get to just sit there and go, yeah, I get to go back the f to sleep and it feels so good. Driving through an open road in the wilderness early morning, right around when the sun is starting to come up. It's Boo. No, that's, that's pretty cool. dope. That's pretty dope. It's oh, and also waking up when it's super so cold and, and, and melting into the covers. Mm, yeah. And, Finishing um, a book and now getting to decide what book you want to read next. And it could be any book. Hmm. Row. Also just eating some bomb ass food. Yeah. Oh, ass yeah. food. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Finn Barrett asked, top 10 ways to eat peanut butter. If you're not dipping Oreos into your peanut butter, you're, you've not figured out the code. It sounds like the worst thing ever to me. It's so um, delicious. Uh, using good. your fingies, using a banana, spreading it on apples, spreading it on toast, uh, injecting it into your veins. On celery. On celery. Ants on a log. That's right. Um, in cups, in peanut butter cups. Um, adding it to your ramen actually is delicious. What? No joke. Yeah, uh, add it to your ramen with like a soy sauce flavor. Peanut is used in I guess uh, that's true. In Thai Asian food, cuisine all Thai, the time. Thai, Thai yeah. food has tons of yeah. peanuts in it. But yeah, like, does it like separate? Tracks. Like, what happens to it? No, it just sort of thickens up the soup. I mean, do it with like a complimentary broth, like soy flavor. But oh, you know. like okay. show you ramen. Okay. Like, yeah, show you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What is that? Seven, eight. Your ass. That that ass. Um, fitting your mouth around the wide lid of the the jiff, and then just going. <clears throat> Yo, y'all ever just, done? Y'all ever spread some peanut butter on a banana? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Hold on. Can we just talk really quick? Really quick. Why do apples taste so much better when you slice them? I that's a loaded question, my friend. That's, I wouldn't si say that they. I do. think that's. I yeah. I don't know if no, I no, agree no. with that. No, no, no. Give it a shot. Obviously, I, you can't I, I have. Apple. I've you given can't. it a shot many times in my life. It's I've so tried much an better. Apple. It's so much better. But there's something about specifically something that's crisp, like a Fuji apple, that like when you bite into it in that first big bite, you actually take like half the apple side with you, and it's just like, oh yes, perfect. That's too much. And it's one and of those like softer, red, delicious teeth. things. I would slice that so you get a little bit of that crown. See, I'm a Granny Smith boy, and I'll I'll eat them anyway. You know, there's Damien's, like Damien's varieties. making a yucky face. There's like 500 varieties of apples. Gr Granny Smiths are the best. Mm. I've had them. And I've had Fuji. Uh, Click by Soul <laughs> asks, "Would you guys date a woman that is taller than you?" So this is a question. Yes, that was kind I of, have. It was we kind of talked about this in the in the uh, podcast last week, where I confronted Carrie Miller, Courtney's sister, that I am to marry um, in the future, um, and she only dates guys that are six foot or taller. Um, would I date a woman that's taller than me? Yeah, I don't care. I mean, yeah. I, it might. I mean, but I don't know. I've never done it, but I feel like maybe there is something. I have zero problem with it. I, I yeah. think the only issue for me, and I know it's the same for tall girls, is that they worry that they are judged, so they feel mm -hmm. insecure. Mm -hmm. I think I would, uh, unless I like felt comfortable enough where I'm like, they don't care, they they don't care, then I don't care. But yeah, I think sure. if I'm worried that they care, that might affect it. Yeah, that, person, yeah. I dated a person, just not not for very long, but I dated a, a girl who was taller than me uh, a few years ago, and I didn't. It didn't matter to me. It just yeah. I would not. Yeah, I, it doesn't bother me. I've dated literally every person I have dated has looked so different. Like I've I mm -hmm. have no type. The I just, same. I have literally no type. I ain't got no type. I don't know. But you, you, but Ian, you're saying you would date someone taller than you. Sure. I've just never done it, I guess. Well, I mean, maybe just like a slight teensy tiny bit taller than me, maybe. I would date somebody like maybe not like over six feet. Maybe I would that date would... someone over six foot. I have no Because it's just, yeah. it's just a, it's, it's just a compatibility thing. If you want to like kiss the person, I don't want to go on my tippy toes. 
I don't have to make her bend over. I don't yeah. know if you'll have to be on your tippy toe. I don't know. Yeah. I'm the same way. I don't think I, looking back, I don't think I have, but I certainly would. That's mm. that's not a thing for me at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I have zero. I've never, I've never experienced. I just, I think the thing is, I feel like most tall girls not a deal are breaker. not interested in guys shorter than yeah. them. It's no. been my, exper- my experience. And I know I hear a lot of tall girls say like, oh, no guy shorter than me would want to date me. But in my experience, personal experience, tall girls have always made it yeah. known very quickly like oh yeah. i only want to date someone my height or tall it doesn't bother me and i don't think yeah. it should bother people but you like what you like so mm, yeah. i think yeah. joe jonas and zane are like leading the charge for the short kings mm-hmm. i think it's becoming mm-hmm. more normalized mm-hmm. yeah i think it's great danny uh, devito walked so that they could run okay yeah. last question this is the most important question of the bros like we uh carl sella asked what are boys thinking bro uh, what are boys thinking bro <laughs> dude women um in my head is just any uh is just the animal crossing theme yeah mm. We don't have to cut that out, right? No. Is KK Slider going to sue us? (laughs) Uh, Uh, Your video has been claimed by KK Slider. Yeah, well, that'd be pretty dope. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, uh, what boy's thinking, bro? I I mean, what this this boy's been thinking recently is that um, maybe I've lost my mind a little bit because... I downloaded a video game. It is a, (laughs) it's so funny that I'm wearing like a Michelin hat right now. I, I downloaded a game that is a off-road trucking game where you like pick up like trailers and take them to their destination. And like you pick Uh, up supplies. You're talking about Death Stranding. No, yes. <laughs> nope. Uh, much worse. It is, it is a like off-road simulator type game. So there's like maybe it's a muddy road and you might get stuck and you might have to like put your truck into low gear and like lock the differential and use a winch to get out. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That sounds fine. We're very different people. It's just very, yeah, it's just very like, I realize how boring it really is, but it's kind of like a puzzle game. That's okay. Like there's always going to be games that are, or even like any kind of form of media that connects to you. And then other people are like, why would you do that? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But then some people are into like really cool stuff, you know? Yeah. And some yeah. people are like into like lame, dumb yeah, stuff. I agree. I know? throw trucker, the free mobile game or it's whatever. Ba- it basically about. is simulator. Road, it basically is ice road truckers. And the weird part is like the loading screen, you know how like loading screens sometimes have like funny facts and hints. Mm-hmm. This one has some like weird, like truck lobby stuff. Where they're like, it's expected that the trucking industry will increase by 20% in by 2030. And like truckers pay X amount of taxes, but only contribute to this amount of people on the roadway. And it's like stuff oh. that's just like very like pro trucker, like I mean, that makes I don't sense. Know. I would it's imagine weird. it would be, though. It's like, weird. you're not going to play like a Call of Duty game and have the loading screen be like, the military industrial complex. There was one blows. that was like... And you're was, like, no, it's going to... There was one that was a... Uh, uh, it was like, women only account for 3% of truckers, but some studies may... Or they're like, but they're just as good at their job. And some may... Th- uh, some studies may show that they're safer. What? Cool. <laughs> what are you trying yeah. to convince us? Like... It's, it's like, like okay, man, they can it's do like, the hey, same job. Women can also do a job, guys. What? This is how progressive we are as truckers. Women can just do our job. But the only woman you can play as in the game has the lowest stats on purpose. <laughs> like they made her like the worst driver. <laughs> we call her bad Diane. <laughs> it's like, wait, you bad just said Diane. that women are good truck drivers, but in the game, you have it designed against them. Sorry. So what, what are you boys thinking real quick? Sorry, I know I took, I took up way too much time. Uh, man, I don't know. It just milk, just sloshes back and forth. Just sloshy mm-hmm. milk. Um, sort of like a, like, a, like a cartoon dog that's walking like, you know, like a classic Mickey Mouse style where his legs are normal, but the body's like bouncing up and down. It's like, and he's just sort of like on a walk cycle. It's in black and white. And there's just like, God. You know, an angry dude like, like coming out of the window. Damn no. it, that Damien, that just made me realize you have a sketch that you didn't talk about in your sketches you've never made. Huh. Uh, the guy who sued Drake 
Oh my god. We'll save it for the next time we don't because it's one of my favorite <sighs> sketches yeah, let's ever. Save that. Oh, also, man. also the I just want to say the game is called uh, I think it's called Snow Runners and it, and it's uh, and Snow it's co- and it's co op. So if you guys want to get the game and come trucking with me, no, and come help. Oh pull, man, no. Yeah, you can come winch me out of a out of a uh, a hole. Um, I'd appreciate that. Ah, oh. all right. So let's move on to the shoot. Oh, yeah, dude. let's move on. Let's move on to our <laughs> shoot, dude. <laughs> shoot, dude. 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 Okay. Damien and Shane are doing weird jokes. JoJo posing. All right. This one says, hi, my name is Zach, and this happened to me a long time ago. When I was like 11 years old, I went to my lifelong best friend's house. Let's call him Danny. And we are playing soccer, and he stepped inside to get us some drinks. While he was inside, I was sitting on the grass in his garden, and I heard a crawling noise near me. I am a huge arachnophobic, which is uh, somebody that's scared of spiders. And when I turned around, there was a huge spider next to me. I stood up and straight up punted the spider into the flowers of the garden and didn't tell Danny about it when he came back. Then a few days later at school, I noticed Danny looked upset at lunch. Oh, shoot. I already, I already see what's coming. I asked him what was wrong, and he said that he had lost his new pet tarantula, Timmy, the other day. I never told Danny the truth about what happened for years until his wedding during my best man speech. He found it very funny. Whoo! That's... <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I, that's, a, that's a controversial shoot, dude, because... He wasn't in the wrong. He didn't know his buddy had a pet tarantula. But also, something suspect that he I don't punted, think it's true. He punted a... If you see a tarantula and you... If you just see one and then you don't tell anyone, why would yeah. you not... Is, why would you not tell anyone immediately after? I feel like all the shoot dudes I've been on recently, and now I know I can say this, have been complete fabrications. And I don't believe I don't this one either. I don't think it's a fabrication. I think so you're telling me... As someone who is an arachnophobic, seeing a tiny spider would probably freak you out. So seeing a whole ass tarantula after hearing a crawling noise, mm-hmm. whatever that is, um, you mind, decide he- to contact it by kicking it. If you were an arachnophobic, you would scream and run away, not be like, time to get rid of this big boy. You well, know, kick it also, into some bushes. We're also talking flight or f- fight or flight. But there, there's and so many weird also, things to also, this. Also, he's all right. Look, he's 11 years old. All right. But your friend already lost the spider at that point. But he wasn't he, sad then. He was sad several days later when he's like, "Yeah, I lost my spider." You lost your spider that day, and you didn't mention it to your friend of, "Hey, my spider's missing from its thing. My a tarantula might be in my home right now." But also, he, they were saying they were sitting on the grass in the garden, so the tarantula already escaped its container and his yeah. home and walked from the house to the direction of the garden, no other area, and he happened to be there. I'm not believing this, dude. Maybe the spider was just this. going for a stroll, you know, little little garden stroll. Mm. I mean, if you're 11 years old, you're not you're not explaining everything. You don't you don't like you don't have like a I'm thinking, civilized I'm thinking conversation. I, I'm thinking there's elements here. I think he already knew that the spider was his friends and was. I think he reacted too quickly and killed the spider or kicked it and was like, mm-hmm. shoot, that was my friend's spider. Maybe. That I just like because it's what's weird is that his friend already was missing the spider and didn't tell him. And then also mm-hmm. kicking a, a tarantula and not and just be like, I'm going to keep this a secret. Well, why would you keep it? Yeah, a secret? Your friend comes think, back and you're not like, dude, huge spider. Dude, okay, there's a so, tarantula so, in your back. So you know what? What probably happened? He knew what the tra- he knew about the tarantula. He stepped on it out of fear, crushed <laughs> it and then kicked it into the garden to hide it. To I'm hide thinking I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking he like knew it was his friend spider when he kicked it. Like, I think he reacted out of reflex and kicked it. I don't think he like did it on purpose, but I think he acted out of reflex and was like, crap, that was my friend's pet. If there's any truth to this, I think he like (laughs) flailed his foot and could have crushed the spider. But it's a pretty active move to be sitting in the garden and like kick a spider with enough heft under it to just yeet it into the bushes. Like, where are the bushes? Like, we're literally talking about getting some lift and air on that spider and arcing it down into a different part of the garden. 
it's a pretty specific I mean, ass story if like it's a not a lie. Kick. He could have done more like a soccer kick, you know, the from a seated, seated position. No, he said he stood. He said, so I stood up and straight up punted the spider. So he sprung up and went, ah, and then kicked it. I mean, he's 11 years old. What do you, what do you do when you're 11? You freak out about something. And you but just I feel like, like, I feel like I would just run. I would just get away from it. Kicking it gives it the opportunity to get latched onto my foot. That's Fight what I'm saying. Flight, you don't bro. want to touch it if Fight you're arachnophobic. Flight. Yeah. I have I have been in a situation, and I'm not even an arachnophobic. Uh, I remember being at recess one day and sitting in like a, a pile of wood chips and just reading. And I was maybe nine or 10 years old, but there was a spider at least the size of the back of my hand. Smaller hands than I'm a child, but like the size of the back of my hand. And I went, whoa! And I like quickly got yeah. up and like brushed yeah. off and just ran. I wasn't like, time to smash this thing because I'm arachnophobic. It's... Yeah. The no, fighter, the fight or flight thing, I get him kicking it. I get it's him not telling his friend, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not telling anyone, and then also his friend only being sad a couple days later that his spider yeah. that was already missing is missing. Then I, I think it's suspect. I'm. I think there's elements I mean, missing got, or twisted or whatever. Yeah. So what I think, I think what happened was it probably got out that day. He didn't tell him because maybe he didn't know at that time. And I think he killed the spider and hid the evidence. I think Mm -hmm. he knew it was his friend spider. I think he killed it and hid the evidence and didn't tell him because he didn't want to feel guilty for killing his friend spider. I think Carol Baskin killed her husband. Husband. Yeah, and I think Epstein didn't kill himself. That's true. Mm -hmm. I I think it qualifies as a shoot dude. Any version that we just said still qualifies as a shoot dude. Mm -hmm. Killing your friend's pet counts as a shoot dude. That's definitely shoot dude. I mean, look... I, I think there's some kernel of truth to this. I think there's just elements he's twisting because I don't think he, he wants his friend. I think he's still guilty. I don't think he wants his friend to listen to this and go, oh, you knew that was my spider and you killed it. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. right now there's still the element of the spider got away and lived a happy life. It's like, mm-hmm. mm, I don't know. No, no, I think he killed it. Maybe he buried it. Maybe yeah. he, yeah, maybe he pulled a Carol Baskin. Maybe he's haunted by spider ghosts. Mm, yeah. Haunted well, then ghosts. I will allow you two to both have shoot dudes. I will have a shoot ske- dude. Skeptic Samuel over Ooh, here. Skeptic right. Samuel. No, All right. Skeptic Samuel. Well, that's that's it. So send your shoot dudes to shoot dude. That's D O O D at smosh.com. Mm-hmm. Nice, send them nice. over and tell them truthfully. Don't or I will call you out. Because we could we could suss it out. I don't think I've had a shoot dude yet that I believed. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you. I'm gonna Thank go you. back to trucking. I got some I got some uh pallets of wood that I need to deliver. You gotta to deliver that wood, my dude. Gotta um, do it. Yeah. Uh don't um, forget make sure to rate us five stars. Five stars. Rate five stars. <laughs> Sorry, that might have been good, good, Ian. <laughs> uh, rate five stars. <laughs> Pretend we're yeah, Uber. do it again. Pretend we're Uber. <laughs> rate five stars. Give us a review on iTunes and go ha ha he he ho 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 ha 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 ho 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 podcast. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Damien. Thank you, Shane. Thank, thank you, you. Ian. Um, thanks, Ian. Hey, y'all. We're all we're all doing great, and we hope that you're staying safe. And um, mm. reach out to your friend. Tell them that you love them. And yeah. we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. 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 Where are you?